Cannabis, Jason Wilcox, Cannabis in Canada. Um, I thought, uh, looking over some of the channel, I thought we would go back to the roots of where this channel started, and that was fundamentally in teaching about uh, what we know and what we've been able to ascertain over the past 10 years about cannabis and, uh, and, uh, and growing it indoors. So basically where we're at now, and I'll ask my camera lady just to pan around at will and uh, show the plants. But right now they're exactly one month in the flower, which is four weeks right now. So they're four weeks in the flower and uh, at this point I go into a PK spike, which is a potassium and uh, phosphorus spike. And, uh, and that's something we're going to talk a little more about upstairs so I'm able to turn my fans back on in the room here and, uh, and get the climate control back to normal. But uh, this will give you a good idea. I've also got, got a lot of different pictures I can show throughout the video uh, showing where the plants are. Um, what's very interesting is when you look here, like right here for instance, uh, there's no red hairs. I mean this is all just straight, you know, the early development of, of what, what, what's eventually going to be your E. coli. Your main, uh, your main terminal bud. And the other thing that's important is at this stage, we've already went and staked every one of them, and they've all been twist tied. So they get twist tied down here with enough room, of course, to still grow. And that's important so you don't cut into any of your branches or anything by mistake. But it's very fundamental that you stake early so that you don't start getting stuff teetering over and covering up other buds. This keeps your, your uh, terminal buds nice and straight up. And, uh, and uh, getting maximum lumens and maximum light spectrum onto your foliage, which uh, results, of course, in uh, bumper yield. Um, with a month to go, um, I look forward to seeing how, uh, how these babies turn out. Definitely a new strain for me, and definitely a new strain. Okay, welcome. Uh, as you see, we're upstairs now, and we brought up uh, one of the ladies, um, and of course, she's protected with a rat trap, you know, which is in here, our uh, mouse trap. Uh, we have every one along the thing. See, they eat, they eat along the sides. These are all the survivors, but as you've seen downstairs, they're, they're what's left, but it still was a, a devastating attack. Anyway, today we're here to talk about a PK spike or a potassium and phosphorus spike uh, during the fourth week of flower, uh, which is something a lot of people don't do, So, um, or, 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 or may or may not know about. I shouldn't say they don't, don't do. But uh, on this particular plant here, it's just been hit with a PK spike. In at four weeks, this is where she looks at, well developing. I mean, it's been staked already because the, the, yeah, clearly it's going to be top heavy. You look up here, you'll notice there's not any red hairs. These are all white, which is, just gives it its early age. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's a very well developing, uh, looks, looks like a heavy yielded plant. Uh, these are new genetics, as I mentioned downstairs. So it's, uh, it's something new to me. However, I handle every strain the same. I've always, I've always grown every strain the same, and uh, each strain, like this one's a heavy feeder, eats a lot of food. Um, that's the one thing that's surprising because I haven't burnt any of the tips of my leaves yet. And, uh, you know, and that can be shown in, uh, in close-ups and that. But uh, what was used during this crop up until now, um, where I'll, I'll show after, and I do like to talk about the nutrients only because I get so many questions around what nutrients do I use and what nutrients should you get. I say what you can afford and try and go organic. But at the same time, if you have the ability to grow, um, my personal favorite is a guano. I'm not saying it's the best, but there's a guano blue. And I'll let my uh, camera lady zoom in on that so you get a good idea of it. Now you would use this as soon as you start your flower cycle. And then of course, uh, there's liquid carbo load. Now a lot of people might wonder, well what's that? Um, think of carbohydrates with people. We get lots of energy, okay? We get lots of extra strength from carbohydrates, um, which is part of the reason we need them in our diet. Uh, plants similarly need the same thing. And uh, there's different ways to do it. Some guys will use molasses, some guys will use different things to, uh, to supplement a, uh, a carbo load. Um, I've tried this stuff and it's shown tremendous results. You can tell by the vigor in the plant. There's a lot of vigor. Like this plant is strong. Strong and healthy. It's holding its weight here on this branch um, in at a month like nothing. Uh, it's just really a nice uh, vigorous plant. And a lot of that comes from this here. And uh, one of the more stranger is one of the, this is mainly for your roots. But uh, you only, only use it once every three weeks. Voodoo juice. You know, and, and uh, this stuff I've never used before, this is the first crop I've really used it on and uh, it's uh, showing interesting results so far. Um, because everything's so new, it's, uh, it's a little harder for me 
need to do. All these products are made by Advanced Nutrients. So, um, if you're wondering where to look, the Advanced Nutrients website, um, it would be where to go to. So, um, at this point, we are going to your fourth week of flowering and it's, you know, you're, you keep going with your standard uh, feeding regimen. Uh, and mind you, your regimen does change. At the beginning of flower, you might be feeding a lot more than what you would be towards the fourth week. Because when you add something with numbers like this, I'll ask my camera lady to zoom in. This is where you see the spike. I mean, you got 45 to 28, it spikes right up. And this is an additive to what's already a solution that was high. Um, as I showed, there was a three and a six. Um, four, three, six. And this one's two, 45, 28. So this is what you add to it, and uh, and again, it's it, it, I know a lot of organic growers out there right now are cringing, saying, "Oh, you switch the chemical." Yes, twenty percent I switch the chemical, eighty percent I'm organic. Um, but that's only because of the sheer results. And you gotta remember, this is no CO two, friends. This is no CO two being used whatsoever. This is where we're at, and and that's just a trick that that some people know about, some people don't. Uh, there's lots of products on the market. Um, there's a um, uh, PK11 by Advanced Nutrients, I believe it's called. I'm not sure if they still make it or Hammerhead. Um, there's a few different products on the market. That product I just showed was by General Hydroponics. Um, all these will run you a lot. And remember, these are additives. They're not your base. This is your fundamental base. You can bloom all your entire crop with just this if you wanted to. You don't have to have all the other bells and whistles. That's optional, um, and that's important to understand. Um, just as important, what happens below the soil determines what happens up here. So basically, your nutrients are determining the outcome of this. And one thing that I'll, well, one thing else I just want to touch on um, is the fact that this was reused soil. That's one more experiment for me because I've never reused my soil before. Um, so aside from having to kill the thrifts way back a few movies ago. Um, and as you see, they haven't come back. Aside from having to kill them um, and sterilize the soil, it's been relatively interesting to see just how well the plants have been able to survive. And the soil's really not, uh, not gone all mucky or nothing. I haven't had to really do any additives to it like I should have, um, adding a few more things like micronutrients. Um, however, I supplemented through food, so such as tarantula mix, which I showed in an earlier video. I did use tarantula, but I ran out, so. Um, you know, these things are expensive and you can only, uh, of course, have them for so long. So that's the PK spike and that's what, again, PK being, you got NPK on every one of your foods. Um, it doesn't matter what food you're, uh, what food you're holding up, you're always going to have uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium uh, running right across. And uh, that's just, that's on every single uh, food item that you get. And uh, that's, that's just the best way, that's your NPK reading and that's what you go by. Uh, then you look at your spikes and sometimes you want to reduce your food when you decide that you're going to add a PK spike. Um, if you're going to add the PK spike, okay, it's, it says add right to your regular feeding. I highly suggest reducing your feeding, um, you know, a couple mils while you would try the new product, otherwise you'll end up burning your leaves. Um, trust me, I've done it a hundred times when I first started uh, messing around with trying to get this spike right. But when you do get it right, as I said, there's no CO2, we'll see what the final yield is. I'm guessing in the area of three ounces, to you know, two, two, two to three ounces per plant um, is what I'm looking at, but uh, I don't know. Um, I have no idea what it's, uh, what it's gonna yield. They were only benched for a couple of weeks and then triggered. So uh, anyway, they're um, now uh, six weeks old then from clone. So from clone, they're six weeks old and uh, this is what you get after uh, six weeks of labor and food and all that that implies. So anyway, PK101, Jason Wilcox signing out.